Do you know, distractions can bring unexpected inspiration and interpersonal communication, especially with unfamiliar people. It can promote a team's decision-making and innovative abilities. Today, I want to share some insights about the power of space. Let me pose a question. If you were asked to design an office building for an innovative company with no budget constraints and the sole purpose of promoting innovation, how would you design it? You can take a five-second pause to imagine your version. All right, let me provide you two very famous and trend-setting designs. The first one, since it's an innovative company, the office building should have a modern style. The following office building embodies the aesthetic of modern art. The space is vast with extensive use of straight lines, creating a sense of geometric abstraction. At first glance, there are only steel, glass, and wood panels with no unnecessary decorations. This style goes beyond simplicity. It's the ultimate simplicity. The other one. Another style of office building also has a modern feel, but takes a completely different approach from the previous one. Various chaotic decorations, all colors imaginable, and staircases and corridors full of personality. In fact, this is just a corner of the office building. The entire building is like a playground, with all sorts of bizarre objects scattered throughout. Even the men's restroom can play a joke on you. This is a design that forces you to play in the office. Which design do you think works better? The answer is revealed. The latter office building belongs to the famous advertising company Chiat Day, which became world-renowned for its 1984 Apple commercial before they moved into this strange office building. The building was the brainchild of company founder Jay Chiat and was completed in 1994 in Los Angeles. Chiat's vision was to use a building that truly represented the style of a 21st century innovative company to stimulate the company's growth, but things didn't go as planned. Indeed, the office building caused a sensation at the time, and people praised it as the epitome of innovation. The only problem was that working inside was uncomfortable. Employees who stayed there for extended periods started to get rowdy, leading to pointless arguments, complaints, management playing politics, and lower-level employees rebelling. Coupled with Chiat's high-pressure management style, the company's performance plummeted. Perhaps the design had bad feng shui. The first building, on the other hand, is the headquarters of Pixar Animation Studios, personally designed by Steve Jobs, now called the Steve Jobs Building. The ultra-minimalist modern style is consistent with Jobs' usual approach, as seen in Apple's various products, from phones, computers, software, to packaging boxes. This is a popular style. However, Jobs made a mistake. He was well aware of the idea that the collision of strangers' perspectives can promote innovation. So when designing the office building, he tried to create opportunities for employees from different departments to communicate. His masterstroke was to design only two restrooms, one for men and one for women, for the entire building, both located in the first floor lobby. Jobs thought that this way, anyone going to the restroom would have to pass through the first floor lobby. Even if you were introverted, you'd have to chat with someone on your way to the restroom. This design was met with strong dissatisfaction from all employees. Now let's go back to discuss what is the true innovation building. Masters don't need beautiful buildings. The greatness of a university lies not in its buildings, but in the presence of masters within. Nowadays, some university presidents who focus on obtaining funding to build beautiful buildings might feel a bit ashamed when they think of this. So, what kind of building does a university need to accommodate and even cultivate masters? The most innovative achievements and masters in modern universities have emerged from one building, the famous Building 20 at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Apart from its large size, this building had no particular design. In fact, it was built in 1943 as a temporary structure to accommodate a military radar laboratory project. An architecture student designed it in just one afternoon. Initially planned for demolition after one year, it remained in use until 1998. The radar laboratory provided crucial technology that helped the United States win World War II and also nurtured nine Nobel Prize winners. After the military project left, various groups from MIT moved into Building 20. It was the birthplace of a famous hacker club, a computer video game, and groundbreaking papers in cognitive science. Even renowned linguist and leftist political scientist Noam Chomsky had his long-term office there. 
The building also gave rise to Bose Corporation and DEC. Building 20 was unattractive and had simple, uncomfortable facilities, but the masters loved being there. When it was eventually demolished, MIT built a new building for the masters, but they didn't welcome it. What made Building 20 so great? Firstly, it indeed met Steve Jobs' requirement of promoting horizontal communication among masters from different disciplines. The building's layout, or lack thereof, didn't follow any specific arrangement based on disciplines, resulting in a chaotic distribution of offices. Interestingly, the room numbering system was highly unscientific, making it easy for newcomers to get lost and accidentally walk into someone else's office, leading to conversations even more effective than those designed by Jobs to take place near restrooms. More importantly, since Building 20 was very basic, its occupants could do whatever they wanted without interference. One professor said that if you wanted to install a new pipeline in another building, it would take weeks to go through the process of reporting, applying for funding, and finding a plumber. In Building 20, you could do it yourself without anyone caring, solving the problem in just one afternoon. In other office buildings, it's challenging for researchers to change the layout of their offices, such as demolishing a wall. However, in Building 20, researchers once removed two floors worth of flooring for an atomic clock experiment. Perhaps the quality of an office building doesn't depend on its style, but on the degree of freedom it offers to its occupants. Last but not least, I will share with you an experiment on four types of offices as an extending observation on today's topic. In 2010, several psychologists wanted to determine which type of office was most conducive to work efficiency. So they specifically cleared out a university psychology department's office for the test subjects to use. They designed four types of offices. The first type had a minimalist style. There were no decorations, and the desktop only had the bare minimum of office equipment. Upon entering, there was nothing to do but work. The second type was a decorated office. There were some artistic photos on the walls, making it feel at least a bit cozier. As expected, people preferred the decorated office, and their work efficiency was higher in that environment. The third and fourth types were also decorated offices. The difference was that the third type allowed test subjects to decorate the office themselves, arranging the furniture and placing the artwork wherever they wanted. The fourth type was quite unique. At first, the test subjects were allowed to arrange the office themselves, but once they were done, the researchers came back and put everything back in its original place. The results showed that the work efficiency in the third type of office was significantly higher than the other types. In contrast, the fourth type had significantly lower work efficiency. One test subject even told the researchers they wanted to punch them, the so-called innovation-promoting office essentially boils down to two points. One, its design should promote communication between different departments. Two, it should provide sufficient autonomy for employees. Autonomy is more important than communication opportunities. That's why the strong-willed Steve Jobs eventually compromised and designed restrooms on every floor of the Jobs building, where there were still many other places for communication. If employees have no autonomy over their work environment, and all designs and styles are determined by the boss without the possibility of change, then whether the style is minimalist or chaotic, it's just deliberate innovation to not genuine innovation. What a person's workspace looks like is not important. What's important is that they can make it look the way they want. If engineers are allowed to arrange their offices according to their preferences, the offices will likely look somewhat messy and disorganized, but that doesn't matter. The current Google headquarters is a beautiful office building, but don't get the logic wrong. Google didn't become what it is today because of this beautiful office building. Google became what it is today, perhaps because of its first messy and disorganized office, which was rented from someone's garage in a few rooms. However, Google has maintained the good tradition of allowing engineers to tinker with their workspaces. Once an engineer called the logistics department, saying he didn't like one of the walls in his office and asked if someone could come and remove it. The next day, the logistics department sent someone to check, only to find that the engineer had already removed the wall himself. The logistics department didn't say anything. Not long after, the engineer said he preferred the original wall and asked if it could be put back up. The logistics department didn't say anything and fixed it for him. So, today's topic is not about the office itself. 
What I actually want to discuss is the struggle between human autonomy and strict rules. Human creativity thrives in an environment that values personal autonomy and encourages natural communication between individuals. All right, that wraps up our video for today. If you found it enjoyable, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you loved it and want to be part of our journey exploring new ideas every day, hit that subscribe button. Until next time.